thanks for joining us, everybody. Starve a fever? Feed a cold? Is this a medical myth or fact? Well, today, we get to ask the doctor and dispel some common medical myths that all of us have heard before. Please welcome from Kaiser Permanente, Dr. Rob Schreiner. Rob, how are you? I'm great, today. It is so Thank good you. to see you. I've been excited about this because I'm going to tell you what, all of our lives, people out there have heard, you know, their mothers say things, people say things, and they don't know if it's the truth or not. And we're going to do a lot of that. But please, tell us what kind of medicine you practice for our viewers out there. Uh, I'm a uh, lung specialist, mm -hmm. and I spend a lot of time, <clears throat> excuse me, I spend a lot of time in the ICU, critical care, gotcha. uh, caring for patients that are very ill. Fantastic. Well, well, listen, I'm glad that you're doing that because I'm sure that you've been helping a lot of people. But now it's time to educate a bunch of folks. And we're going to dive right into the myths and shatter some of them today. And let's do this one first. This one is very near and dear to me because I have this uh, malady. When kids eat a lot of sugar, does that cause hyperactivity? This is one of the most strongly held myths in our uh, community in the United States. And so in order to debunk it, I think I have to speak both as a physician as well as a parent. Gotcha. And uh, so I'll tell you that all of us parents have noticed that kids seek out sugar and we occasionally give it to them. We've also noticed that they get hyperactive or very active, particularly at inconvenient times. Very right, much so. Right before bed or church or whatever. <laughs> uh, but, and, uh, but the two are not related. It's been very clearly shown in multiple scientifically driven studies that, uh, that feeding kids sugar does not bring on hyperactivity, even in kids who have uh, so-called ADHD. Right, right, and, and that was me. You know, I'm ADHD. I, I, you couldn't tell. I no, had not at anything all. like that. Right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, and, and that and that is a common thing because I, I've heard it so many times from parents that said, "Boy, that sugar just brought this onset on." Well, listen, I, you know, the question that I always have is, how do these myths get started? Yeah, well, uh, we we humans uh, walk through life constantly trying to figure out cause and effect. Yes. I mean, that, that's part of the human condition is figuring out how the world works. And so we'll make an observation like kids uh, getting sugar. We'll make another observation like kids jumping up on the bed right before bedtime. And we and in our mind we connect the two. Both are true, but not related. Okay. Well, let's let's see about this one. Could being in cold weather or just being cold in general lead to a person being sick? Right. So, uh, so uh, exposure to cold air, particularly dry cold air, can bring on symptoms like a cold, mm -hmm. but being cold or going out into the cold does not increase the risk of getting an infection. Certainly not the infections that cause the common cold or even influenza. So, uh, so cold air and being cold brings on symptoms like that mimic a cold, okay. but do not cause cold infection. And I know we're getting into cold and flu season, that kind of thing. What are some of the great ways to knock colds out? What, 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 what advice would you give viewers out there to knock those things out? So, for, so to avoid getting a cold bug, wash your hands a lot during uh, the winter season, during the cold season, and try to touch your face uh, the, uh, as little as possible. Yeah. And, uh, and then also, you know, be mindful about your environment, particularly at work and when you share uh, pens or doorknobs or even like what is typing right, on keyboards exactly, and stuff like right. that. So just think of your hands as, as dirty during that season. <laughs> Go wash them a bunch. I wash my hands, I don't know, 10 or 20 right. times a day. And, uh, and that's really the very best way to prevent getting uh, so-called common cold bugs. The okay. best way to prevent getting the flu bug is to get the flu vaccine. All right, that brings me to our next question. You know, people always say, man, I got the flu vaccine and boy, I caught the flu the next day. Is that possible? No, it's not. <laughs> so there, there are two groups of vaccines that we doctors use. There are the group of vaccines that use so-called killed viruses. The viruses are absolutely dead and those are injected and we build up an immunity to, to those bugs that prevent, that uh, protects us when we're uh, exposed to those bugs in the future. So mm -hmm. that is the category of vaccine that flu vaccine comes from, right. are dead bugs. Now there is this other category of vaccines that use alive but injured bugs, but that's not the category of vaccines that, that flu vaccine comes from. And, uh, and so uh, you cannot get flu from taking the vaccine. Well, here again, you, you would ask JJ a moment ago, how did these myths get started? Right. Well, 
So many people will get their, their flu vaccine on, say, Monday, and then develop cold symptoms on Wednesday. Well, they just simply got a cold bug during those couple of days. It wasn't at all related to the vaccine itself, but here again, people being people and trying to figure right. out how the world Cause works. Effect. Yep, they, they remember getting the vaccine on Monday. They got uh, sick on Wednesday. The two must be related, but in fact, they're not. Here's one that I, I found very interesting when we were talking. Does using a cell phone at the doctor doctor's office real, really cause problems for the technical devices? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm going to get, uh, get into some trouble from my <laughs> hospital colleague saying this, but in fact, using a cell phone in the hospital does not impact the equipment in any meaningful way, wow. does not uh, lessen our ability to take care of patients. We weren't sure 10 years ago when cell phones became sure. so commonplace, and so we did the, the prudent thing and put up those signs and said, until we scientifically uh, test this, please don't use your cell phone around our, our equipment. Well, in, in the 10 years that have elapsed, we have studied it very carefully. Cell, phones, cell phone transmission does not meaningfully influence our equipment. What it does do, though, putting those signs up does do one thing, What's that? And, and that protects the environment from healthcare workers and also sick patients who don't want to hear about and my, hear all that yeah, nonsense. my kid's soccer game or, you know, or... Uh, uh, or you know your uh, you know various things in your life, and, and so so if you have to take a cell phone call, go ahead and do it, but do it in a quiet yeah, place. Yeah, go outside or something. Right. Our last question today for you, doctor: Does an apple a day really keep you away? Um, this <laughs> this myth uh, was traced back to the 1800s or so. There was right. a proverb written in Wales that uh, five-line rhyme about uh, if you want to avoid going to the doctor, eat an apple. It's it's absolutely understandable how this got started. Apples are some are one of the most healthful foods that we can eat. And we at Kaiser Permanente, you've probably seen, and many of your viewers have seen our ads when we uh, celebrate eating blueberries and, uh, and broccoli. Uh, very high quality foods that have high fiber and also a lot of nutrients. Same is true for apples, okay. 80 cal calories per apple, great food. Uh, it absolutely is part of a healthy diet. And yeah, it could keep the doctor. It could help it. Hey, can you give folks your website? So if they need to see any more information, get some great information from Kaiser Permanente, they can do that. Happy to do so, JJ. It's it's very easy. KP.org. KP.org. Makes all the sense in the world. Doctor, thank you so thank much. You, JJ, we really much. appreciate it. Folks, we'll be back in just a little while. It's our season of giving, and we want you to stick around. There is more. JJ on Atlanta coming right up.